So in learning film photography, there's some basics that you're going to, going to want to know about to take control artistically of your images. Um, one thing to remember with photography as a whole, you know, photography is a balance of science and art. You know, once the basic principles of photography, you, you have those mastered, um, you can really then focus on the artistic side, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, so what I always like to do with photography is talk about some of the basics first. Um, the basics being, you know, f-stop, aperture, shutter speed, you know, composition. Um, those being, you know, the, 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 the paramount rules of photography to get, you know, great shots that are meaningful to you. So back at, the, at Lee Photo, the camera store, whenever we sold a film camera to someone, part of the service that we offered is we gave them a, a free photo class. And part of that was actually this, this little booklet that I wrote to kind of go along with the photo class. So it was kind of a package deal. You buy your camera from us, we will teach you how to use it. And I'm gonna do that today. Um, now we're gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to split this video into several sessions um, because there's a lot of material to cover. So this will be part one. And we're gonna to, to go through the book, go through exactly what I would teach in the photo classes um, that I did at the shop. So if you guys are ready, we'll get started into learning film photography. So one of the first things I go over or went over with a new film photographer, a new photographer, someone who's bought a single lens reflex, were some of the basics of the modes. Now, of course, um, film cameras and most cameras have a manual mode that you can start with. But for a beginner, I wouldn't recommend starting in manual until you kind of get a grip on the basics of photography or the basic modes. Um, with most you know, semi-modern film cameras, you do have things like program, just like you do with a digital camera. So all you would do is put it on program, focus, take your shot. So you didn't have to worry about f-stop or aperture. And for most people, that was fine. But if you wanted to get creative with your photos and have a little more control over, over your camera and your images, um, you need to learn some basics. So that's what I want to go through is one of the first things that I always teach was AV mode or aperture value or A mode. It really depends on what kind of camera you're using, um, which would be, you know, um, you know how this works. But like on this one here, we have different modes and the mode dials are controlled uh, by turning this dial here. Um, and that's how you select the different modes that the camera is, is utilizing. So in this case, with this Pentax MZS, um, how you change modes is pretty simple. If you wanted to go into time value mode, what time value or TV mode is, in some cameras it's called S for shutter speed. That's shutter speed priority, AV or A, is sometimes known as aperture value or aperture priority mode. So let me talk about how to use those. So in this camera here, and every film camera is a little different and some are not gonna have these modes, but this is where I'm gonna direct you to. So in this Pentax MZS, um, we have this main, if you look down here on the camera ring, um, and I'm gonna kinda zoom in on it a little bit here, there we go. So on the aperture ring here, this is how you turn the camera into AV mode you know, to use. So the shutter speed is being selected automatically. So if you want to use AV mode, all you do is take this out of, there's a little letter A here on the lens and a locking button. You take it out of there and now you're free to use your f-stops. Um, and there's a little trick to learning f-stops. It's pretty simple um, when it comes to the numbers because a lot of people are not sure what these numbers are. The easy way to, to think about this is just that the bigger the number is, the more of your photo is going to be in focus and sharp from the front of the image to the back of the image. So from your foreground, your mid range or your, where your subject usually lies within the, the, your middle ground or your background, middle is where your, where your focus point is. So if you focus on the middle, what f-stop you choose on your aperture dial is really gonna control um, where that focus is going to lie, okay? So let's start there. Now for, you see the pictures, um, and I'll show you so like these here. 
this image there. This one is where you have a lot of, you'll hear people say the uh, bokeh, um, as far as your depth of field, the background being out of focus is referred to as bokeh. Um, that is being shown at a very, very small number. So that could be, you know, it depends on the camera, depends on the lens. It could be um, f2, it could be 1.4, but a small number. Small number meaning like 1.4. Big numbers being like 8, 11, 16, 22, um, the bigger f-stops. So the aperture acts like the iris or the colored part of your eye. If you'll notice if you're in bright light, your iris will contract down to a smaller opening. Um, if you're in bright light, or I mean if you're in low light, it'll open up so you have a lot more black in your eye. You know the iris will expand or contract. That's all to let the right amount of light in so you can see. Now luckily our eyes don't have to worry about bokeh so much, <laughs> but at that same time too, it's an adjustable part that allows light through, through the lens. So to control, or by controlling f-stop, we're controlling basically the brightness of the image. So while f-stop, or I mean shutter speed controls the duration, f-stop controls the volume of light traveling through the lens. And think of it a little bit as you would like water, okay? So in comparing light to water in photography, if you have a bigger opening, like let's say 3.5. So now this is where it gets kind of counterintuitive. With f-stop, the bigger the number, the more is going to be in focus. But that also equals to the smallest opening. Okay? Because what happens is when you have the small opening of the ap aperture, like f22, it compresses the light waves through the lens, and that way that's how it creates that... that um, Everything else is sharper from front to back. Is that that compression of the light wave, light rays within the lens? Um, but that's what's going to control your depth of field, and it's it's counterintuitive because 22 is a big number, but it's a very small opening in the lens. Okay, so f 22 is going to let the least amount of light through your lens, while let's say f 4 is going to let in a lot of light through your lens or you know, depending on the lens, like on this one here, this is a 1.4 lens, so it's gonna let a value of 1.4 amount in, so that's a very large opening on a lens, okay? So that controls your depth of field. Now, I've same thing, what's depth of field? Okay, so depth of field is the distance from foreground to background that is in focus. The easiest way to remember f-stop is the bigger your number, the more of your scene is going to be in focus from front to back, okay? From the camera position. Now it changes based on where your focus point is. So let's say typically, you know, if you have a scene, you know, your subject is, he let's say, you know, here's, your camera's here, here's your subject, here's your background. And depending on the distance from the camera to subject, and the subject to background, all three variables will control, you know, how something lies within the scene and how it's in focus. Um, so for example, um, let me show you a diagram, okay, of how this, what it looks like, okay? So right here, if your subject is at this position, let's say if they're like at 10 feet away, okay? So if you're shooting at f1.4, very little of that subject's going to be in focus from front to back. So let's say this is your camera position here, you know, here is your subject. That's how that gray area is how much is going to be in focus. While if you choose like 5.6, this is how much is going to be in focus, you know. And if you use f11, well maybe at that point, if you're at 10 feet, everything from a little, let's say about from six and a half or five and a half to six feet, to all the way to 15 feet behind your subject's gonna be in focus at f11. Same thing, this depends greatly on camera to subject distance and what type of film you're using, um, or not type of, what type of film, what type of um, uh, format you're using, whether you're using you know, 35 millimeter, 120, these are all variables. While f22 here, being a very small opening, is gonna give you the most depth of field. So see, big opening, letting lots of light in, not much is gonna be in focus from front to back. 
a little better, so it's a little larger opening or a little smaller opening, you're going to be letting that much light in, a value of 5.6, so that's what it's going to be. So this kind of gives you a guideline of, of what's going to be in focus. This is not 100% mathematically accurate. This is just to kind of give you an idea, a visualization of how this works. So the one thing you should know, and this is, to, it doesn't matter whether you're shooting film or whether you're shooting digital, there is one factor when using AV mode, or if, you're, if depth of field is a primary concern of yours in, in creating images, there's something you need to know. And that is that focal length will determine how much depth of field you have. So wide angle lenses as a whole, like um, this lens here, this is a 16 to 35 millimeter f4. If you are down here at the wide end, which is at 16 millimeter per se, per se, or actually even like, you know, 28 or 35 millimeter. Those focal lengths being their wider angle, your f-stops affect, are gonna act differently. So example, if, if you're on 16 millimeter with this lens, shooting at f4, and you're on this 85 millimeter lens, which is a, a mild telephoto or a medium telephoto, and you shoot this at f4, you're going to get totally different results as far as where your depth of field lies within the scene. As it goes, naturally, wider angle lenses will have greater depth of field. And here's another way this is affected too. If you are shooting, now let's see, a 35 millimeter film, that's very true. But let's go to digital for a minute. So if you're using like a micro four thirds camera, like an Olympus or a Panasonic, you'll notice if you have an F4 lens on that Panasonic and a similar focal length also at F4 on a full frame camera like a Sony, uh, you know, uh, Alpha 7R, for example. Okay, the f-stop is going to, the depth of field is going to be different on those cameras, even though you're using the same relative focal length and a, the same f-stop. Because the sensors are smaller and the lenses are engineered differently, you're going to have different results with your depth of field. So keep this in mind. And whatever your, the wider angle lens you have, the more depth of field you're going to have natively okay so it's just the way the optics affect the way you know it looks but for the most part if you're shooting 35 millimeter film and you know your your film cameras just something to keep in mind if you're shooting a 28 millimeter wide angle at f4 or f28 or whatever you have it's going to be less depth of field than let's say if you were shooting you know at f8 obviously but if you were to shoot this at, you know, F4 at the same distance, it'll react differently. So just keep that in mind. So wide angle lenses naturally have greater depth of field no matter what you choose. It's still going to affect depth of field. You can still create that separation between the subject and background by controlling your f-stop. So you have those nice blurred out of focus backgrounds, but just keep in mind, um, that's one factor involved that will affect the way it looks. Also, your physical distance from camera to subject will also control your depth of field. Um, so let's say if you're shooting at like this lens here, this is one of my favorite portrait focal lengths, and this is an 85 millimeter 1.8. Now if I shoot at 1.8, and I physically back up quite a bit so I can do like um, a waist up to head kind of a portrait. So it's kind of a, a, a mid-length portrait. And I shoot this at 1.8, the nose will be in focus. And let's see if you put the subject at an angle like so, um, you're still gonna have the nose, the shoulder, and the back shoulder in focus. If you back up far enough, so just from the head to the waistline is gonna be in the image. It would still be fine for that. But if I shoot this at 1.8 and physically move up to the subject with the 85 millimeter, so it's just a head and shoulders and that's it. If I focus on the eye at 1.8, the tip of the nose or the ears will be out of focus. So 
something to keep in mind that physical dis dif uh, physical distance from camera to subject also will affect depth of field. So let's say if you really want to have some, you know, exaggerated out of focus elements, here's some juggling you can do. So let's say you want to do a, a portrait using a 35 millimeter focal length, which is very popular right now for, for portraits. Um, if I shoot this at f4 and physically back up so I see more of the subject, maybe full length, and shoot at f4, quite a bit of that image is going to be in focus. But if I move closer and make it like um, a middle, you know, from the waist up type of portrait and shoot that same f4, that, ep that uh, depth of field is going to drop off really quickly behind that subject. You know, always do a test shot to see if you're shooting digital, but, you know, just keep that in mind that that's going to change. Now, in the days of film or in film cameras, well, how do you check <laughs> to see what your depth of field is going to be? Because that's the thing. And um, most mm, amateur film cameras or professional film cameras of the time have something called a depth of field preview button. It depends on the camera. They're all in different places. On some cameras, they were right here below the lens where you'd press them and it would show you, what it would do is it would close down the f-stop, also darkening the image so it's harder to see. So you did kind of have to concentrate on it a little bit, but you could then see how much depth of field was gonna be in that scene. Like on this Pentax here, all you do for the depth of field preview is the little on and off switch next to the shutter. You would just pull it. So you just pull the little lever to the left, I mean to the right, and then you can hear it click down. I don't know if you can hear, but when you pull that, it shuts the lens down so you can see. So that way, when you're shooting, you can kind of go, okay, here's my focus. I want to see where my depth of field is. I just pull it over to just double check. Yep, that looks good. Okay, take my shot. So it was a process. So if, if depth of field was really critical with your film cameras, make sure to use that depth of field preview to double check yourself. Um, especially if you're doing still lifes or you have the time, that's always a good way to double check. Um, so there's a little some a little pro tip. Um, a lot of people don't know about that feature, don't, didn't know what that is for on a camera. That's what it's for. So when you're shooting and you wanna just, you're picking your f-stops and say, oh, okay, no, I wanna make sure that this depth of field is where I want it to be. All you do, pull up on that lever, and now I can see it. and. That's one of the reasons I really like the Pentax MBS, MZS when I was shooting film is because it was real quick and easy. It was just, oh, okay, real quick. I'm shooting in the middle of shooting, got something going on. Yep, check my double, double check my depth of field right there. Good, all right, great, take the shot. So it was a really intuitive workflow to be able to do that. So that's how it was done. Okay, so I hope this part one of this uh, how, to fo how to use film series helps you. Um, we were just going over f-stop aperture. I hope that uh, you know it was clear for you. Um, if you've got any questions, please leave a comment down here below so that way I can get back to you and answer any questions you have about f-stop and aperture and how they work together and how I use it as well. Um, also, this is part one. I'm going to do a part two later on and we're going to talk more about um, my next Kind of, I'm going to go into shutter speed or uh, you know shutter speed priority or TV mode is sometimes what it's called on like a Canon EOS for example, but that's what I'm going to go into next. So anyway, um, stay tuned. I should have that out probably in about a week or so, and um, let's keep this conversation going. So please hit subscribe, click like if this was valuable to you, and please you know ask me questions. I'm happy to help where I can and and um, start a conversation about this so we can all become better photographers. Anyway, thanks so much and uh, have a great time. Okay, for all you fellow YouTubers out there who have cats, I feel your pain. Right, Daniel? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, yes, are you done now? Okay, get down. Bye, Daniel. And that's another way to use F slop. Step. Can't talk. Sorry. Try again. Start over. <laughs>